This video is on constructions, and before we start actually doing constructions, we need to define what a construction truly is. Let's look at three different words that you are familiar with. The word sketch, drawing, and construction. And two of these, I think from the artist's perspective, are pretty straightforward. A sketch is like an outline, uh, a freehanded drawing. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, to scale. A drawing, is, in my world, in the mathematics world, is, more, is an accurate representation. You can use any tool you want to to make it the way you want to make it. And when I say any tool, I mean any tool. I consider a computer a tool. I consider uh, the templates a tool, any tool that you'd want to. And then finally, a construction. A construction is a special type of drawing in which you only use a compass and straight edge. So let's talk about the tools of constructions. Here I have a typical bow compass, and you will see that a bow compass it make is because it has the threaded rod through the center, and that keeps the radius or the distance between the, the point and the lead to be uh, consistent. Um, with these are very sharp points and a handle. Now, the one that I am offering also that I have, this is the other one. It's not a bow compass, but since I'm able to tighten it down, and it does still have a very sharp point here, uh, I like it, and for it's not bad for the money. Um, I have switched out the lead for a pen so to show up on the, the video. So let's talk about how to use this. What you This handle is shaped the way it is, for a reason. You put the pressure on the point and then you twist with the handle. So uh, let's see if this shows up. There. It's kind of light, but I'll do the same thing. You notice that I just twist. If I pressure on the point and just twist my fingers, A little skip there. I'm able to make a perfect circle. Now we move on to duplicating line segments and angles. And duplicating a segment, well, we only get our straight edge. Now this is a ruler because it has markings. A straight edge would have no markings at all. Uh, so we're not going to, you cannot use it, so I'm not going to ever go up there and see how far it is. But I can use a straight edge and I can use my compass. And to make a new segment that is the length of AB, I would first draw a ray that is longer than AB. Okay, now I take my compass and I open it, I adjust it so that it is exactly the length of AB, and it's okay to put a mark on your original. Come over here, point, and boom. And there is my new segment. Now, we have some special ways. We could call this PQ if we wanted to. Now, AB now is the same length as PQ and we have constructed with our straight edge and compass. Uh, I also could have done it and uh, tell you a little bit more information. I can do, I think this is the same here. If I mark this, the same. If I mark A, B, and I can put this tick mark up here, that's called A prime, B prime, and I am. that's a copy of the original segment. So I'm actually telling you where I got it from. All right, now on to this angle. I have an angle E, and I need to copy it only with my construction tools. 
Well, an angle is made up of two rays, so we know we're going to have to make a ray. So let's do that. Let's draw a ray. And if you notice, my compass doesn't really help me. Because as, as I get closer to the vertex, it would, it would get smaller. So I can't just put this anywhere. So what I need to do is to mark two points on both rays, and I want to keep them the same distance from the vertex. And I'm gonna do that by stabbing the vertex and marking an arbitrary length, okay? Anything that we want to. It doesn't matter, it just has to hit both rays. So, draw a ray, then an arc, a piece of a circle, on vertex and intersect both rays. Now, without moving my compass, I'm going to stab my new endpoint and make the same arc. So those two arcs match. Lastly, what I need to do is see how much of the arc we want. And that's where I use my compass to measure the length. And I would highly suggest that you make a mark right there. I really want you. Make a mark on the original, then come over here, make a mark on this one, and you'll see that now I've got a mark there and there. And sorry I used the pencil. I won't do that anymore. Um, and then we make the line that goes through the two points. Notice I'm still doing it like before. Put my straight edge there, make sure that I'm going to go through those, and then I make the another angle. So there is my copy of E, or we'll, we'll say angle F. So angle E is congruent to angle F. Now on to making a perpendicular bisector of a segment. So we have a segment, uh, we call it AB. I want to make a perpendicular bisector. So that means it's going to be perpendicular to AB and go through the middle. And the way I'm going to do this is I am going to take my compass, open it up so that it is the length of AB. All right, and I'm going to swing an arc. Actually, let's swing a huge arc. So now that's kind of making a half a circle around B. If I do the same thing, because it should be the same distance from A to B as it is from B to A, now see, I wasn't using, I was trying to make it so that you could see Look what I've made. I've made two circles and they intersect above and below the segment. As a matter of fact, you could probably guess at what kind of triangle this would be right here. And you'd be right that this distance is the same as this distance is the same as that distance. That's an equilateral triangle. This is the same equilateral triangle. And if I were to connect the points here and here, it splits it right down the middle, very carefully. And in fact, if it was the equilateral triangle, that now is a 90 degree angle because this one matches exactly. It's like folding it in half, the two, the two sides, right? And so I think you don't have any problem with believing that that is perpendicular, and you can you can check out, see how far you are. You can measure it. Oh, that's bad. You could measure it. Mine's about one, two, three point three. One, two, three. Wait, I did I measure wrong? One, two, three. Oh, almost, almost four. One, two, three, and almost four there. Yes. How did you do? If you make that construction, did it get right in the middle? So that now is a perpendicular bisector. Now, 
I want you to know something about your perpendicular bisector. If I choose a point, let's just choose an arbitrary point right here. Let's make it C. I'm going to put it on the perpendicular bisector. What do you think is going to be true about the distance from C to A and C to B? Well, if I draw them, drawing, and I use, and my, if I allow you to use the tools, it looks like they're pretty close. Mine's 5.2, 5. oh, wow, really close. If I use my construction tools, it appears that this distance is the same as that distance. And that was an arbitrary point. As a matter of fact, that is true. We are going to leave it as a conjecture, I'm inductively. If you put it anywhere on there, you're going to make an isosceles triangle. It was equilateral as I moved down the middle because this one's right in the middle, yes? That's the midpoint of AB. As I moved down, I still continue to be the same distance from, from the endpoints. And that is our conjecture for the day. Perpendicular bisector conjecture. C5, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints. And that's what we just drew. Now, let's look at it backwards. Notice I got it in different colors. If we do it backwards, the converse, putting the pink part first and then the orange part, if it's equidistant from the endpoints, does that mean that it must be on the perpendicular bisector? So, if you look back at our drawing, and I'm going to tell you that C is equidistant here. Does that mean that it had to be on there? Well, let's just, I'm not going to ask you to prove it now. We'll do that in the last six weeks. If I stay this way, if it's equidistant, if I go closer to, to A, then I've got to, I'm going to increase the length from B, right? If I go closer to B, then it's, so the only place that I'm equidistant to the, is actually on this perpendicular bisector. So we can write another conjecture that's the converse of it, right? The converse of the perpendicular bisector. So if it's equidistant from the endpoints, then it must be on the perpendicular bisector. All right, tomorrow we start drawing and constructing. So bring your tools.